Very good evening and welcome to NDTV. It's 8 p.m. It's time for the news on the channel. These are the headlines. I'm Ankit Tyagi. Day after Pran Pratishtha, massive rush in Ayodhya. Uttar Pradesh government says three lakh devotees visited the temple. 8,000 security personnel deployed to manage the crowds. Rahul Gandhi's Bharat Jodo Nyai Yatra blocked from entering Guwahati leads to massive face-off between the Congress workers and the Assam police. Triggers a political flashpoint as Hemanta Biswa Sarma orders FIR against Rahul Gandhi. Another setback to the ruling YSRCP in Andhra Pradesh ahead of the election. Nasara Opeta, MP from YSRCP, resigns also from the party. Now, YSRCP leadership reportedly wanted to replace him with a backward caste candidate. A diplomatic controversy with India, Maldives confirms a Chinese research vessel will dock in Mali next month. India sees the vessel as a spy ship. Maldives says it has always been welcoming destination for vessels of friendly countries. The primary which could decide the Republican candidate for United States presidential election, Nikki Haley, goes up against Donald Trump in New Hampshire. And Oscar nominations uh, have been unveiled. Oppenheimer sweeps nomination. Oppenheimer eclipses Barbie at the Oscars. Female cheetah at Kuno National Park in Madhya Pradesh gives birth to three cubs. Environment Minister Upendra Jadav shares the news on Twitter. Just a day after Pran Pratishtha, thousands of devotees thronged at Ram Mandir for Darshan in Ayodhya, making it a tough challenge for the police to manage. Uh, the, in fact, uh, you know, the entire security and the arrangements at Ayodhya. Remember, it was yesterday when uh, the grand ceremony took place in Ayodhya for the Pran Pratishtha and a lot of devotees, because the temple was open for devotees today from 7 o'clock till 11.30 in the morning and then 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. in the evening as well. These visuals, ladies and gentlemen, at, uh, from Ayodhya earlier uh, today when huge crowds... Uh, Initially, they uh, in, in fact startled the administration very quickly. The Uttar Pradesh uh, government deployed senior officials and additional forces to try and maintain the situation at the Ram Temple. Let me very quickly go across to my colleague Tanish Punjabi, who is joining us with more details uh, from Ayodhya. Uh, Tanishk, uh, it's a cold evening. I can still see a lot of people standing behind you. Uh, morning was a little bit of panic. Is the situation now under control? Yes, Ankit, exactly. The situation uh, is under control. At around between between 1 to 2, a, 1 to 2 p.m., you know, the uh, uh, situation was brought under control. There was a little bit of panic in the morning. There was a little bit of chaos because the crowds actually gathered here in large numbers. Uh, the thing is, because uh, some people were actually inside Ayodhya waiting to do the darshan and some actually joined after the Pran Pradeshta. So, yes, a lot of crowd gathered here, but situation was brought under control by RAF, SSB and and the UP police uh, queues were made and, and coordinated, uh, and, co and, uh, and the darshan was uh, felicitated by the by the police personnel. I am with the people who you know went inside for the darshan. Some, all have come from different parts of India. Uh, this lady has come from the uh, neighboring neighboring town of Gonda. Kaisa laga aapko darshan karke aur pal pura. बहुत अच्छा लगा बहुत अच्छा लगा तो आना जाना कैसा हुआ बाद में भीड़ थी आप कितने बजे आई थी जी हम लोग 6 बजे निकले थे दर्शन नगर से दर्शन नगर हम लोग रहते हैं इस टाइम प्रॉपर गोंडा के रहने वाले हैं अच्छा यहां हम लोग राम जी का दर्शन किए बहुत अच्छा लगा सही लगा आपको है ना इजीली हो गया जी बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद आई वुड लाइक टू शो यू देयर इज दिस वन पर्सन हु इज कम ऑन वे ऑल द वे ऑन हिज रोलर रोलर स्के रोलर स्केट्स रोलर ब्लेड्स फ्रॉम कहां से आए आप मैं बिहार से छपरा से आया हूं तो ऐसे क्यों कैसे दर्शन करने के लिए यहाँ पर कितनी दूर से कितना आए हो हम लोगों के यहाँ से 370 किलोमीटर पड़ता है और और हम यहाँ पे दर्शन करने आए हैं और स्केट चलाते हुए अच्छा। और मेरा दोस्त एक साइकिल से आया है अच्छा एक स्केट से आया एक साइकिल से आया 
पूरा आपके तीन सौ कितने दिन में कवर हुआ है कहाँ कहाँ पे सोए हम लोग चौ, ये चौथा दिन है और राम के कृपा से हमें कहीं ना कहीं दर्शन मिल ही जाते थे कहीं ना कहीं रुक ही जाते थे कोई अच्छा। ना कोई रुका लेता था खाना वगैरह खिला लेता था रास्ता में कभी पुलिस वाले भी मदद कर देते थे कहीं भी कोई दिक्कत नहीं होती आपको कैसा लगा दर्शन बहुत अच्छा लगा राम भगवान का दर्शन करके बहुत अच्छा लगा यहाँ पे हमने अपने पैंतीस साल की उम्र में पहली बार ऐसा भव्य मंदिर देखा और ऐसी व्यवस्था देखा जो हमारी सरकार के हमारे प्रति है बहुत 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 धन्यवाद सो यू सी पीपल द एक्साइटमेंट ऑफ द पीपल हियर हु केम फॉर द दर्शन ये संकेत ओवर टू यू All right, Tanish uh, Punjabi is reporting from Ayodhya. Uh, there, uh, let's just, uh, ladies and gentlemen, bring you this report, which my colleague Tanish and our other colleagues have sent from the ground of what happened on day one when the temple was open for the general public. Thousands of devotees, people waiting for us in line. to catch a glimpse of ram lala mumbai se aayi hu aur main aaj vrat bhi rakhi hu jab tak darshan na ho to pani bhi na piyu jai jai shri ram koi baat nahi 550 saal kara ek do ghante aur karenge 4 ghante karenge koi dikkat nahi vyavastha badi achhi koi pareshani nahi hai dikkat nahi hai kuch bhi kal hi darshan karne ke liye aaye the par kal rok diya tha aaj to karke hi jayenge to manage the crowd the administration fixed timings for darshan from morning to 11 am and then from 2 pm to 7 pm many devotees said they had been waiting in ayodhya for days for the temple's opening the situation improved at 2 pm this afternoon around 2 lakh people completed their darshan by then around 8000 security personnel and eight magistrates have been deployed at different spots to regulate the crowd but such was the rush that senior officials like the up principal secretary home and the special dgp law and order were present inside the garb grah to personally supervise movement of devotees sabhi log acche se darshan karenge sabhi ke darshan achhi tarike se honge kyunki sankhya zyada hai hamara shasan ka manya mukhyamantri ji ka nirdesh bhi hai ki log is prakar se darshan kare kisi ko darshan mein suvidha na ho vyavasthit tarike se sab darshan kar paaye aur anvarat darshan karte hain Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath also conducted an aerial survey today. The situation today signifies the change Ayodhya has gone through and a glimpse of how the future is going to be for Ayodhya as it is being promoted as a hub of religious tourism. The workload of the administration is only going to increase in the future. With camera person Virendra Kumar Saini and Sachin Gupta, Ravi Shanjan Shukla and Tanish Punjabi for NDTV. All right, we're getting some breaking news uh, at this moment, ladies and gentlemen. Important one: uh, the government of India has decided to, to confer the Bharat Ratna uh, to former uh, OBC and Chief Minister of Bihar, a big, tall OBC leader, Karpuri Thakur. Uh, he will be conferred a bharat ratna the president has been uh, in the communique says the president uh, has been pleased to award the bharat ratna to shri karpuri thakur posthumously remember the uh, entire talk about the obc politics and uh, the and both the bjp and jdu in the state of bihar are locked in a heated battle to try and uh, uh, somehow gain from the legacy of this uh, tall obc leader uh, now this comes as a very significant move ahead of the 2024 elections as well let me go across at this moment to my colleague akhilesh sharma who is joining us with more details on this uh, akhilesh a tall leader nothing takes away the legacy of karpuri thakur being now conferred the bharat ratna of course there will be no controversy on that but the fact remains that this is being seen as a big political move uh, as the talk of obc reservation and the obc politics booms large ahead of the 2024 elections that's correct in fact it's a cliche but i can use this uh, master stroke is a which is a cliche often used in the politics but of course you can call it a master stroke by the modi government ahead of the crucial lok sabha elections 2024 because in bihar where the bjp is fighting its own its own uh, the jdu is not with this and uh, it has some smaller parties along with it but where the caste matters where karpuri thakur is the biggest name as far as the obc politics is concerned the bjp government at the center has decided to confer bharat ratna the highest 
biggest civilian award of India to him and coming ahead of just uh, uh, his birth anniversary. Tomorrow is the birth anniversary of Karpuri Thakur and BJP has made elaborate arrangements not only in Bihar but also in Delhi uh, to celebrate the birth anniversary of Karpuri Thakur and on uh, just be before that uh, the president just issuing a communique that uh, Karpuri Thakur will be awarded Bharatna posthumously and this is a very big step as far as Bihar politics is concerned because remember just few months ago Nitish Kumar who has been a votary of the OBC uh, politics and also about the caste based survey and caste based census he conducted that exercise and uh, has uh, decided to increase the OBC quota in uh, Bihar but of course apart from Nitish Kumar you know it was Karpuri Thakur long before VP Singh had implemented the Mandal Commission report Mr. Karpuri Thakur when he was the Chief Minister of Bihar he actually implemented for the first time in India reservation for the uh, OBCs and right. that's why he's called the Masiha or the Pitama of the OBC politics in India. He was very straightforward, very honest uh, leader of Bihar mm. and this uh, uh, decision of the Modi government will not only impact the Bihar politics but also national politics and also uh, may, if may I add, you know, this will also raise another question. Will it bring BJP and JDU together because uh, JDU will definitely welcome this decision to confer Bharat Ratna to Karpuri Thakur. That's right. It's a battle of the legacy and this uh, move by the government of India would be seen somewhere as uh, to try and blunt the opposition, which is, uh, in fact, talking about the OBC reservation and, uh, you know, big stalwart leaders like Karpuri Thakur. Thank you so much, Akhilesh, for joining us uh, with all those uh, details on this significant news. Moving on now, Rahul Gandhi-led Bharat Jodhunya Yatra was stopped from entering Guwahati in Assam today when it diverted from its permitted route, triggering protests from Congress workers who broke barricades and uh, raised slogans against the Chief Minister of Assam. Meanwhile, the Assam Chief Minister asked the cops to file an FIR against Congress MP Rahul Gandhi, who has in turn hit back at the Chief Minister of Assam. My colleague Ratnadeep Chaudhary with this report. A confrontation between Assam police and Congress supporters as Rahul Gandhi's Bharat Joro Yatra entered Guwahati from Jorabat in Meghalaya. This was the third time the Yatra had entered the state. The chaos brought traffic on National Highway 27 on a standstill, causing a traffic jam, even as police had blocked roads leading into Guwahati from the National Highway. This was a route the Yatra had permission for. His Yatra was supposed to take the National Highway 27, but uh, they tried to divert inside uh, into the Guwahati city. Their uh, barricades have been placed and there, because police has uh, put heavy barricades, so therefore, because police has put heavy barricades, so uh, there has been a confrontation here. This has been ever since the Yatra entered Assam. There has been confrontation between uh, the security force, between the government and the Congress over Rahul Gandhi Yatra. Assam Chief Minister posted online calling for a case against Rahul Gandhi. State's DGP has clarified saying police have initiated appropriate lawful action against Congress leaders and participants who were part of the clash that took place between the Congress supporters and Assam police in Guwahati. Rahul Gandhi has hit back. This is what Assam Chief Minister is doing against the Yatra. This is the Yatra. Now, where you have to go to the Mandir, to the Mandir, to the college, to the college, to the college, to the college, to the Yatra, to the Yatra, this is the style of intimidation. Intimidation tactics, we are not intimidated. This was the fifth state that Rahul Gandhi's Nyaya Yatra is travelling through. But the Congress has labelled a series of allegations against the BJP in Assam, setting up the possibility that this Yatra, coming just ahead of the 2024 general elections, could become a political flashpoint. With campus and Nakul Rabha in Guwahati, Ratandeep Chaudhary for NDTV. Meanwhile, the India Alliance is still facing some of the severe tests as far as their seat-sharing arrangement and agreements are concerned, specifically in states where it has to join hands with 
strong regional parties. In states like Punjab and West Bengal, things have come to a stage where the central leadership has been unable to rein in their local leaders from targeting each other with whom the central leadership is keen on forming the alliance. So will the Congress and the regional parties come to some conclusion? And that too soon is the big question. हम जो मीटिंग में जाते हैं हम देखते हैं सीपीएम मीटिंग को कंट्रोल करते हैं जिसको साथ चौतरी साल हमारा जिंदगी में लड़ाई किया हमने हमको बहुत असम्मान मिलते हैं वो लोग क्या कहते हैं हमको जो मर्जी हो हम करेंगे भाई जो हमारा जो हमारा सीट नेगोशिएशन है वो चल रहा है उसका रिजल्ट आएगा कंक्लूजन आएगा उसके बारे में मैं यहाँ कमेंट नहीं करना चाहता हूँ बट हमारा ममता जी के साथ मेरा पर्सनल और पार्टी का बहुत अच्छा रिश्ता है हाँ थोड़ा थोड़ा होता रहता है कभी कोई उनका कोई बोल देता है हमारा कोई बोल देता है दिज आर नेचुरल थिंग्स दिज आर नॉट थिंग्स दैट आर गोइंग टू डिस्टर्ब एनी थिंग As Mamata Banerjee warned the Congress over Delhi dallying on seat sharing and said she would fight the BJP on her own, Rahul Gandhi responded. While Adil Chaudhary, the Bengal Congress president, said he is not aware of the TMC joining the Bharat Jan Nyaya Yatra when it enters West Bengal and is opposed to an alliance with the TMC for the 2024 elections, the senior Congress leadership thinks differently. Mamata Banerjee, a absurd body, Nitya ki naam hai. BJP ke saath. बंगाल में वो चुनाव बांटना चाहते हैं सोसेसे द तृणमूल कांग्रेस हैज द एज इन बंगाल एंड इट डज नॉट वांट टू सीड स्पेस टू द कांग्रेस एट इट्स ओन कॉस्ट इट फील्स द कांग्रेस शुड फोकस ऑन स्टेट्स वेयर इट इज इन अ डायरेक्ट फाइट विद द बीजेपी द कांग्रेस डज नॉट वांट टू बी कंप्लीटली एट द मर्सी ऑफ द टीएमसी एंड लूज इट्स ओन बेस इन इट्स स्ट्रांग होल्ड्स इन द स्टेट इन पंजाब एज़ वेल द कांग्रेस हैज अ सिमिलर चैलेंज A seat sharing arrangement between the Congress and the Aam Aadmi Party hasn't been finalized yet for Punjab. With state leaders of both parties vehemently opposing it, a sharp attacks between the leaders of both parties continue. But in Bihar some good news for the alliance. Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar will share the stage with Rahul Gandhi when his yatra enters Bihar from Bengal. Coming to a seat sharing agreement with regional parties is going to be a challenge for the Congress balancing the demands of its own leaders and workers and getting the election arithmetic right with muscle flexing regional political parties is going to require some deft political negotiations both internally and externally if the India Alliance is to mount a serious challenge to the BJP in the 2024 Lok Sabha elections. With Mohammad Ghazali in Chandigarh and camera person G D Shankar in Kolkata, Saurabh Gupta in the TV. Meanwhile, series of setback as far as the ruling YSRCP is concerned in Andhra Pradesh ahead of the Assembly and Parliament elections. Now, uh, Nasir Peta MP from uh, YSRCP has resigned and has also quit the party. The YSRCP leadership reportedly wanted to replace him with a backward caste candidate as their experiment of uh, social engineering, which at least at this moment seems to have backfired. Let me very quickly bring in my colleague Uma Sudhir, who is joining us with more details on this. Uh, Uma, it's a very, very crucial election where both the Congress and the BJP are trying to, you know, find feet uh, in Andhra Pradesh. The TDP is trying uh, to gain sympathy of with what has happened uh, with Chandra Babu Naidu. In that context, uh, these kind of news coming in from the YSRCP, how worried should the party chief and chief minister be about this? The Congress and the uh, BJP certainly not a presence in Andhra Pradesh. The Congress, of course, trying to revive its chances with Y. Sharmila taking over the mantle of leadership for Congress. They are uh, down to two percent uh, vote share. So from there, for her to work her way up uh, and uh, challenge the leadership is becoming quite a problem. But yes, today she started a tour of the state, and it's becoming quite interesting the dynamics that she is attacking a government that's uh, headed by her brother. And there are uh, sensitivities on both sides, and both seem to be attacking in rather in. direct manner why sir cp certainly realizing that uh, the sitting mps and mlas are facing anti incumbency and therefore they had started an exercise 
of surveys and therefore after the Telangana results as well in which uh, they saw KCR and the BRS uh, repeating the MPs and MLAs and paying a heavy price for it and that's the reason why YSRCP is in fact decided to replace a lot of those MPs and MLAs and already four lists are out in which it seems uh, you know about 58 uh, names of MLAs have come out, new names, 10 MP names have come out and big changes that are taking place and that's what is seeing this huge uh, you know revolving door should I say for three uh, YSR MPs are already resigned and gone out. First we saw Karnul MP, then it was uh, the uh, uh, Machli Patnam MP and now uh, the uh, uh, Narsara Peta MP. The talk is that we would also probably see the Ongol MP moving out of the party. Of course, the TDP also lost Kesneni Srinivas, who is the Vijaywada MP, and he's gone and joined the YSRCP. And the talk is that the brother of uh, Kesneni Srinivas, Kesneni Srikanth, may be pitted against him uh, by the Telugu Desim. Interestingly, just two more points. Prashant Kishore, who had gone and visited Chandrababu Naidu on the 23rd of December, has to, today denied that he is, he is going to have anything to do with the elections in Andhra Pradesh, saying that even though he was called by Chandrababu Naidu, he is not going to be uh, helping him or uh, helping strategize because he says he has finished that work and he okay. is not going to be going back to party strategy working for any political party. Back to you. Uma Sudhir, thank you there for uh, that, uh, you know, sum up at where the politics of Andhra Pradesh stands at this moment. Moving on now, a Chinese vessel, Shuang Yang Hong O3, is entering the Indian Ocean and is headed to Maldives. The destination, Male, is noteworthy amid the ongoing friction, uh, friction between the India and, uh, uh, and Maldives over Indian troops stationed there. My colleague Vishnu Shom has more on this. Well, the fact that the Maldives have actually confirmed that there is a Chinese spy ship headed to Male is a very significant admission. It comes at a time, and this was a statement that they issued, it comes at a time when there's a great deal of tension between New Delhi and Male. Now, what exactly are we talking about? We're talking about this Chinese spy ship. It's an oceanographic research vessel. Essentially, it maps the seabed, which would therefore enable the operation of Chinese submarines. It came through the straits over here, and it is headed... To Malay. It's expected to dock in Malay on the 8th of uh, next month. Now, why are we concerned about this area? Well, there's Hambantota, Karachi and Djibouti, three areas of Chinese influence in the Indian Ocean region. Let me explain to you what we are specifically talking about. Firstly, this is the ship in question. Indian Navy sources telling us that they are monitoring this Chinese ship, which is now in the Indian Ocean, 4,300 tons. But the point that I was trying to make was actually a little bit about the area. So let's take a look first at Djibouti. This is where China has its first overseas military base. This is a satellite image of the Chinese base in Djibouti. Again, an area where they're seeking to make their influence. There have been warships which have been deployed over here. Let's take a look now at uh, another area. And this is Hambantota. Let's focus on Hambantota in Sri Lanka, where the Chinese have regularly deployed spy ships as you can see in this image over here an image from a little more than a year back of an advanced chinese vessel which could actually monitor indian missile tests so that's in hambantota and again let's just go back over here take a look uh, and take a look over here at karachi which is of course a long time partner of uh, china's and over here you've got just a picture one month back of three chinese warships uh, which have actually been exercising with the Pakistan Navy. So now there is a Chinese research ship going to Malay at a time of tension between New Delhi and Malay. That's a cause of concern.